Let's see if you guys can hear and see me. <clears throat> hey, Yasmin. Good to see you. Hey, Patrice. Hey, Crystal. Hey, Go Kart. Hey, Maggie. From Michigan. Hey, Andrea. Good to see you. Hey, Jen. Jennifer. Angelique. Andrea retakes her exam on December 2nd, and you don't want to fail again, but I know if I'm ready or not, I'll psych myself out. Hey, Flower. Hey, Blondie. Good to see you. They do really help, especially exams D, E, and F are super challenging, more challenging than A, B, and C, and they can really help. Hey, Karen. Good. I'm so glad you can hear me. 206. Good to see you. Hey, Kay. Hey, Linda. We got Philly in the house, too. How do we know which exams we had? Oh, when you take the exam in person is the only way you know what exam you've got. You can't tell when you take it online. Um, and it's when you remove your sticker from the plastic wrap around your exam booklet and you stick your sticker on to the bubble sheet, there is a place where you actually bubble in exam C, B, A, whatever, into your coding exam. Before long, all we're going to have is online exams. Whether you go to a testing facility and have it done, it's still going to be online. Or you take it at home or at the library or wherever you want to go or at a hotel. I've had some people rent a hotel room and use their um, internet there because they didn't have a part of their home that they could use as a room with a shuttable door. So they just rented a hotel room. You had an interview today. I hope it went well, Flower. Awesome. Yes. Um, I'm talking about practice exam questions on exam questions from exams D, E, and F are harder. They're just exams that you can purchase. I'm not talking about a version of the AAPC certification exam that you actually take to try to pass. I was talking about exams A, B, C, D, E, and F. I think of all the exam versions that I've seen or heard about, that were the in-person exams. C is the more challenging just because it has harder vocabulary terms, but we all know what those vocabulary terms are now, so other than that, it's not really that much harder. But yes, the practice exams from the ones that you can purchase that are D, E, and F, those are very helpful. If no one has any questions for me tonight, I will go on and start our practice questions.
<laughs> Probably not any more than what I've already kind of gone over um, recently. The main thing is practice before you do your exam. Let me get to muscular skeletal real quick. That will be a better option. So before you run to two codes is a possible answer and then you have another two codes is an answer. Before you look at the CPT code descriptors, let's say this is C and D, this is A and B, before you look at these descriptors, you really need to go find your headers. And this is under Arthro Desis, but you also need to go back and look for your red header to see if there is one. We're under pelvis and hips. If it was A and B. If it's Jessica W has become a member. C and D as a possible answer. Look back for the red header. This is under foot and toes. So clear your headers. Before you look at your CPT code descriptors, best advice, no matter what section you're under, unless all your answers are in a row like A, B, C, or D, then you don't have to look for headers, right? But if they're separated by anything at all, be sure and look for your blue headers and your red headers, no matter how far you got to go back. Look for your red headers and clear that before you do anything else. And this is under foot and toes. That will help you eliminate two answers right away. And then you can concentrate on your CPT code differences. Under ICD-10, you're going to have some of the same things. especially when you get to the C's and D's. This is going to be where you're going to clear your purple headers before you even look at anything else. Let's say two answers are Two answers in your ICD question are here, COO 5 and 6, and then that's A and B, and then D and C are D001 and D012, that's C and D. You're not going to look at your differences of your ICD-10 codes, not even your three-digit numbers. You're not going to look at that. What you're going to go back and look at is your purple headers. They're purple for me. I don't know what version of the ICD-10 book you got. We're going to clear whether our cancer is inside you versus a malignant neoplasm. We're going to look for those two words in our practice question or our, our exam question first. Malignant neoplasm versus inside you neoplasm. Clear that, that'll get rid of two answers. Then you look at your three digits. You're going to stop at D01. Look for anything that says use additional code alerts because it would be there at the D01. There isn't one here, but D02 does. You don't want to go all the way down to D02.4 and try to pick an answer here because you don't have your guideline alerts that tell you you can't use this one all by itself. It's going to have to have two codes. But the only way to find that is if you stop at the first three digits. So a couple of steps here with ICD-10. There's only five questions in ICD-10, but
but there are some guideline questions that might be included in some of this. So don't forget to stop at your three digits. Look for your use additional or use first or whatever kind of guideline. It'll be there at your three digits. And then don't forget to clear your purple headers before you even think about looking at ICD 10s. That's really important. What else do I have over here in my cheat sheet file? Um, you don't need that because you're taking it in person. JVD, be sure you know what that is. Be sure you know the difference between my ring, ear surgeries, and Timpan surgeries. My ring surgeries already have kids or adults that already had tubes put in their ears and we're working on something else or going back in for those tubes. If it's Timpan, then we're putting in tubes today into their ear. That's what the surgery is for. So be sure you know those differences. Um, CRNA, your max, you want to know those anesthesia stuff. Hospitals are TC exempt, technical component exempt. MDs are the only ones that use 26. Oral and rectal contrast means that you picked the radiology that has no contrast with it at all. Nuclear and PET scans do not include pharmacologicals, so you can add J codes to that. I'm sorry, my child is being really loud and changing trash cans right now. So, sorry if y'all are hearing all that plastic moving around. What is this? No, nope, that's not helpful. All right, happy it's getting done. Uh. And then our usuals. You want to know your difference between the skin's gland. Um, it's a lesser skin's gland. It's a lesser gland. The part of your nail bed. Uh, Warthon's tumor. OS means it's opening of the cervix. Phalanges. Be sure you know what those are. What connects bone to bone. Parts of the shoulder. Parts of the knees. Parts of the small intestines, parts of the large intestines, what does ESRD mean? If you have the 2023 CPT book, know about those charts on page 368 and 53. Hip picks, know about short and long arm cast, ALS, BLS differences in hip picks, that kind of stuff. Adverse reactions, the six digit is going to be in the answer. We'll have the number five in it. Pick that and move on to the next question. Uh, any codes that start with 114 are benign. Any codes that start with 116 are malignant. Know your vocabulary word trick. And you want to know stuff about modifiers 26 TC, RT, LT. 50, 51, 76, 77, 73, and 74. Ooh, I got a really good one for the RT and LT today in our practice questions. One that I did not think about. So, pretty cool. And you want to know what HIPAA, what do each individual letter stand for? And what does NCCI, each letter, stand for? What does the I stand for? What does the C stand for? That is all, that's like 50 questions of the exam right there in front of you that I just gave you. So be sure to know all that kind of stuff 
um, any guidelines like your default inside your guidelines like if they don't tell you whether the anemia is caused by cancer or not just write your defaults so that you've got them inside your ICD-10 book and then that way you know which one to code first which one to code second super cool handy dandy guideline right there Hey, John's Adventure, good to see you. How are you doing? Let me catch up with chat because I was talking for a hot minute. My twinkle is not here, is she? Aw. So, Jennifer, that ought to help you out. Angelica, if she cannot hear, she needs to make sure her device is not set up to just go to a Bluetooth device. If everything is blurry, where's my cell phone? What you're supposed to do, probably get ads to pop up, but let me show you what you do for blurry screen. When you click into my live, yeah, I'm gonna get an ad pop up. I hate advertisements, but it's just part of the nature. When my live comes up, click on the screen. You'll get that little wheel right there to come up. Click on that wheel, it'll give you options. Change the quality of the playback to a higher quality. That will make it less blurry. And you can also rotate your screen and make it bigger and all that kind of stuff. But be sure and change your screen quality. I'm still reading chat real quick. Hey, Maria. I told the recruiter that I just became a CPC and my current job doesn't offer those types of positions, so I'm searching for an employer that offers growth and opportunity and denials. Awesome. Was that the answer? I think it's great. Okay, thank you for changing the setting to a higher, higher quality quality that made it clear. awesome did my best with practice F on my second time around and I got an 88 awesome I finished within an hour and 40 minutes for 50 questions I think that was a great answer hey Nicole hey makeup good to see you yeah, pathology is difficult. If you get a 50% in that, I think that's 100% really well. The information snip to make notes. How's my twinkle doing? You're very welcome, Jennifer. Hey, John's. Good to see. It's like a little family reunion here. Okay, gave out five YouTube memberships. Kathy, Char, who else? Cynthia, that's my mom's name. Made to Modify, and Heather won. Congratulations, guys. I understand what you meant. <laughs> I tried. Hey, Gomez. Good to see you. All right, let me get rid of this camera. I hope those YouTube memberships help out. You have access now to everything I've got on there from the podcast to the old workshops to the old um, duck classes 
to the book prep videos. The entire video course of CEMC is now posted. Um, just any exclusive videos that I've made, you've got access to everything now. So I hope that is super helpful for you guys. Best of luck, Gomez, for your exam on Saturday. Be sure and rewind this video. I just went over about 50 questions that could be on it um, in quick session. So hopefully that will help out. Let's do some more Intigmatary. Right here, we've got two codes that are 19081 and two codes that are 19100. We need to go see what our differences are real quick, see if there's a header change. Let's go look. Oh, let me open up my books. 19081 is our first one in numerical order. 19. You gotta be faster than me in these books. 19. 81. And then where is 19100? Oh, they're all under the same. Same header, so that's great. What's our one word differences? It's whether we had stereo, ultrasound, MR, needle, or cut out. Ooh, chick on. Good. Look, my oldest just made me some dinner. Look how fancy. He even puts the chives on it. He's so sweet. It's got fresh chicken. He cooked that himself. And then rice and stuff. Yum, yum. It's all hot and warm, so excuse me <laughs> while I take a bite. He just handed this to me. Got to try it while it's warm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yum, yum. So let's look through. Ooh, I see stereo. So what do we think the answer is? <laughs> IT and a cook. Yes, yes, yes. The only problem is, is I got to clean the kitchen afterwards. <laughs> but that's okay. At least I got a good meal out of it. Gosh. Oh, that's so sweet, Blondie. She said, good luck. I know all your studying will pay off. That's awesome. That's very sweet to say. Two minutes per question. Yep, that will leave you with enough time left over. If you struggle with a question or not, you'll have enough at the end to be able to go back and do some extra stuff. If your brain will let you. Usually you're just exhausted by the end of three hours and it's just like I'm going home you can't wait till your kiddo can cook she's three and loves to help me so I think that she will yeah she will be sure and let them go to like any summer programs look out for your community colleges Travis started even in like sixth grade going to the community college in the summertime and learning how to cook from the community college. Baking and stuff like that. They took them for a few hours, like four hours a day. And um, it was great. So even fifth, sixth grade, somewhere around there, they can start them really early going over there in the summertime. It was great. Yep, this one is ultrasound, this one's stereo, and this is no kind of imaging at all. Yep, 
We didn't know, need to know it was a woman. We didn't need to know it was a right breast mass. We didn't need to know ABBI. We didn't need to know none of that. So after I figure out what the answer is, that's when I go back and go to my CPT codes and because they called this one an ABBI, Advanced Breast Biopsy Instrument. Do they call it that in the CPT code descriptor at all? Nope. But I can put up here AKA A B B I which is kind of cool. Just anything that you can pull from those practice questions that is used in the question that is not in the CPT code is super helpful. Just to add to the CPT code. So what I've got here is that we're not to add modifier 50 to this particular code for some reason. I have that it's a biopsy, it's bilateral, it's with stereo, and I have an example. If we do bilaterally, we have to do the 81 and then we have to do the 82, the next code. That's how you do bilateral, you don't do the modifier 50. That's super helpful information. That's why my notes help out so much during the exam. But if you just gather information like I do from these practice questions, your notes will look like mine too anyway. I'm just checking up with chat. that the community college here worked right out of high school and they have college kids starting when they were in kindergarten. That's cool, even sooner, that's awesome. They do tell us that that particular thing, if it was bilateral, we would do that. And that if it's not, then we need to add the RT or left T if it is a singular side. Probably ought to make some notes about that because I haven't, I don't have anything with that on it. That would be something to add. All right. We've got two answers that start out with the 30 and two that start out with the 77. Don't worry about the secondary numbers yet. Let's go look up our differences between the 15, 8, 30. 15, 8, 30 is here. Where is our 77? Is it under the same header? Yep, they're all under the same header, okay? 30 is an excision, where 77 is a suction. We can't look at 77, we have to look at its parent code or its mama code, which is the 76. So don't forget about that. You can't do much with children codes. You have to go and look at the mama to see what the difference is. So I had to go look at the 76 code to find out that this was suction and that these are excisions. Let's just look through our example and see what did we do today. We did suction, right? So we know right away we'll get rid of this one and this one. Now we just need to know the difference between the 78 and the 79. What do you guys think the answer is? Hmm. 
Where is posterior iliac crest? Where is that? We also have lateral trochant auric, posterior aspect of the medial thighs. Would that be considered trunk or would that be considered upper extremities? Or lower extremities? While I take another bite of this chicken. Got C's and B's. Speaking of my my first baby child, if y'all haven't yet, y'all need to follow him on TikTok. His name on TikTok is John the Viking. It's spelled J-O-N, the Viking. This is where we scooter around Las Vegas. This is Lake Havasu. It looks like Harry Potter World. We one wheel and scooter all around our local towns and stuff. We went to um, the Spear and did it in Las Vegas last week. But we can't stream live and show y'all in real time until we get a thousand followers. So just a shameless plug for uh, my John the Viking. We got like 50 followers. <laughs> We got a long ways to go, but it's okay. On our nights and weekends and stuff, we scooter all over the place and uh, try to show off cool sights. Anyway, that's our local park down by the river in um, Bullhead City. We've got the Colorado River coming up on this video later on in the video. Anyway, it's just cool. See, there's the Colorado River. But if you want to hang out with us, and I can also answer coding questions while I'm running around live, too. If we ever get a chance to find us a thousand followers on that. All right, to answer this question, whether we are a 78 and 79, whether we're trunk or upper extremity or lower extremity, it probably would have been, the trunk is part of it because that is part of our lateral tro. Iliac crest is our hip, and then we've got our medial thighs. You know that's lower extremity, right? But just knowing these AKA terms is super helpful. So you know we're definitely going with C on this one. But now... On this lower extremity and stuff and the trunk you can put iliac crest as an aka for your trunk equals hip and then lower, you could put posteriorly. Medial thighs. 
something like that. Anything that you can find in these questions to update your CPT codes with is super helpful. I know I need to get the camera out of the way for y'all to see the question. No, it's not on YouTube. That's on Tiki Talk. Thank you, Johns. That's awesome. On YouTube, we'd need a thousand followers too to be able to stream. So we're doing one thing at a time. If we can get enough on TikTok, it's easier to stream there than it is on YouTube. Super nice. I think you can get more followers on TikTok first and then you can transition over to YouTube. It's hard to find uh, random followers on uh, YouTube first. All right, don't worry about the secondary codes yet. Just concentrate here. We've got three answers with the 32 code. Let's go see if what's going on in that code and make sure we're under that correct code because if we're not then we know our answer C and we can move on. What's going on with 13132? That is a child code. We can't do much with it. So we have to go find its mama and its mama is 31 so we don't have to go too far. So it's a repair and it's a complex repair. Did we do a complex repair on this particular patient? We did debriefment with irrigation. On a layered closure, does that mean we're going to be complex? Your guidelines for those differences and stuff are separated out by simple, intermediate, and complex. Now, I know if our simple incorporates irrigation, then it can be called intermediate. It says it in that last sentence, a single layer closure heavily contaminated that requires extensive cleaning can be called an intermediate repair. Is that the same thing here? That if you have an intermediate repair, but it has a lot of contamination, can you increase it and make it a complex one? If we didn't use the 32 and we went to the 12054, what would we be under? We would be under a repair intermediate. What do you guys think we are? Are we complex or intermediate? <laughs> what did she say? Patrice said, Patrice said, which one? Which question was on your exam?
This one was on your, okay, I'm going to go add this one to our what's been on the exam document that I keep, but I cannot share. AAPC has asked me not to share that anymore with anybody, but I like to know what was on the exam so that I can t make sure I teach it. Toss that in there. Thank you so much for that information. That really helps me out, which does help you guys out. This would end up being a complex repair, even though they don't really technically have that in the guideline like they do underneath the intermediate. They should write it in underneath this complex repair, but I don't see it there. just a whole lot of guidelines underneath that complex repair but I don't remember seeing that particular upgrade written there but that is correct it would turn into a complex now we just need to know would we do the 133 times 2 times 4 or times 2 here but also times the first code. So would this end up being five CPT codes, three CPT codes being billed, or another five CPT codes being billed, technically? Because, you know, the times is. If you add this, this would mean five CPT codes. This would also mean five CPT codes. And this, B, would mean three CPT codes. I like to add and see how much certain things are. It makes things a little clearer for me. I can think about what would AAPC want as the answer? What are they trying to push me towards as picking an answer? Probably the difference between the two fives, since they're both the same amount, they just want to know if I know how do I do this? Do I times the first one and the second one, or do I times just the second one? It's probably a difference between A and B. What do you guys think the answer is? Ooh, Suzette, I'm copying that and putting that down here. Copious irrigation, yes. Are digital books allowed for next year's exam? No, Flower, they're not. Not yet. We got D's and B's. Okay, if, if B was the answer, if B was the answer, where am I at? One, three, one, Three, two, three, two. We would be we would be ten plus seven point five. So we would be twenty seven point five if that was the answer. If we're D, our answer would be 
5, 10, 15, 20, 27, no, I did that wrong, I can't count, 17 points, yep, 5, 10, 15, 20, plus 7.5, so 27.5, how much was our stuff? Cheek, chin, hand. They're all located on the same area? Yep. So we've got 10 plus 4 plus 9. That's 13 plus here is 23. So we've got 23. Would we be here or would we be here? If we did this one times three, 5, 10, 15, 15 plus the 7.5, we get 5, we get 13, we get 23. What did we do? We did, we did 23.5. Hmm. Rationale. Oh yeah, did one of them was bilateral, wasn't it? Did we add enough? On the chin, laceration on the right hand, bicycle, and laceration on her cheek. No, nope, they're all together. Did I add them together right? One, two, yep, 23. Me of you has become a member. They're saying D is the answer. They're saying 23 was together. That's reported with times 4 because the first 7.5 is dealt with the 32. That leaves 15.5, which means they're going to report 4 units. I doubt that's technically 100% correct. I bet we don't get to bill a whole nother 0.5 for a whole nother unit. I bet the answer is technically supposed to be three more units because you're supposed to bill have half plus one to be able to bill it. I would assume before you build another 33 you would technically have to have two more centimeters, 2.5, before you could bill a times four. But we have to learn what AAPC wants as their answer. And they claim that that equals enough to do times four, which is supposed to be 20 units, but I don't know. Unless my math is all wrong. Why would you think chin and hands are different areas, my love? Check your CPT book. Looky, looky. We got forehead, cheeks, chin, mouth, neck, axillary, genital, hands, or feet. All right there. Isn't it crazy? The arms and the legs are a separate area, but not the hands and feet. It's crazy with these body parts. Arms and legs are up here with the scalp. 
of all things. Your trunk is in a separate area. Your eyelids, nose, and ears are in a separate area. And what's separated for complex is different than what's separated for intermediate. Intermediate does hands, neck, feet, and genitalia in a separate setting. Not the same as forehead, cheeks, chin, neck, genitalia, hands, and feet. Different body parts are grouped together differently by the complexity of the repair. It's not bundled by body parts universally, no matter the repair, whether it's intermediate or complex. If you're over here in intermediate, you've got whole different body part groups. So you really have to pay attention to the way the code descriptors have the body parts separated because they change based off the complexity, not by the body part. It's crazy, insane. As long as it would cover, it would be correct per AAPC because she called them and argued, and she also VP'd and proctored a test in the chapter. She retired and has been helping me a bit with some of the questions, too. She wants me to be an officer, but I am not ready for that responsibility. Ah, oh, Andrew, you'll do just fine. Um, deep is one of the new officers of her chapter. So definitely writing this example down that 27.5 equals this with this times four next to these codes is what you need to do. Put that example down here that a 20.7 point, whatever, 27.5, or did they add them all up and get 23? They get even less than I did. Anyway, that that covers that answer for a times four, according to AAPC. Whatever they want is the answer is what we're gonna write down next to our codes. All right. We got three of them in the 1950s, but two of them have the same answer. This one has one CPT code and one diagnosis code. This one has two CPT codes and one diagnosis, one CPT, one diagnosis, one CPT, one diagnosis. I like to look at that. These two have the same answer, so I'm automatically going to go check and see what's going on with that particular code. 11950, what's going on there? We are under the header of introductions. We're introducing something to the body. We would be subcutaneous if we were here. What did we do in our question? Subcutaneous collagen to alleviate a depression. Does it sound like we're in the correct area? I think so. Maybe, maybe. We'll see. How much did we utilize? What do we think the answer is? Close my door again. Sorry. Where's Travis and Jen, or James and John? John and Reggie might be uh, playing. Where's James? 
in the shower right now. Okay. More chicken. What do you guys think the answer is? If C was the correct answer, we would have to bill the 1950 and 51 together. Did we do an injection in one location that was one cc or less? And did we move to another location and do another injection somewhere else of an injection between 1.1 to 5 cc's? That's what you're saying if we said C was the answer. If we build those two together. Did we have two separate locations? This would mean two locations. This means one location up to five cc's of med. One location, two locations. I hope that helps anyway. B is the correct answer. <clears throat> All diagnosis codes here. We've got two answers that are 22 and two answers that are 21. Got to go see our differences here. We don't need to stop, I don't think, at our C50 because we don't have any additional diagnoses that we need to worry about or any guidelines like to see also or code something else before it because all our answers are immediately right underneath each other and there's no additional answers to worry about. So in this particular example, I would not stop at C50 like I'm always harping for y'all to do. This one, I would go on down to the differences between the two ones and the two twos. C50, two two is Malignant neoplasm of the upper inner quadrant of the breast of a male. That's our 2-2. And of the 2-1, it's of a female. Who is our patient? Our patient is a female. So we know we can't do 2-2, right? So we'll get rid of the 2-2s. Now it's just a difference between the 1 and the 9. What do you guys think the answer is now? I just like math too. 
yep, we've got the right showing up. Perfect. B is it. Our next one, did we do two CPTs, one, three CPTs, or two CPTs? Three of the answers are start off with the same answer. I'd go see what's going on with that one really quick. You're going to head off. Your child is super needy tonight. I've got a really good question come, coming up that has some really cool info in it that I didn't even know. So be sure and re-watch this tomorrow, Andrea, okay? Come back for what you miss out on, all right? I think it's five more questions away. All right, where are we at? We are at 15,100. Magpie, what do you want, baby? You can't be coming up here. Mama's teaching. We had a full thickness burn, but we did a split thickness graft. What do you guys think the answer is? If we did A, A is a split thickness with surgical prep. B is just a split thickness. C is surgical prep being the most difficult procedure. And then 15271. Then we did a graft of less than 50, and then if we did 72, we added another 50 to it, so we did 100 cc's. If our answer was D, we did 
a split thickness. with 200 square centimeters. So what we did was 8 times 5 is 40. Even if we took and multiplied it times 2, because we see the number down twice, 40 plus 40 is still just 80. We're still not getting nowhere near 200. See you guys. So what is surgical prep? What is this, this 15002 if we were going to do it and we needed to add it to this? Surgical prep is the creation of a recipient site by excising of an open wound So, if our operation was a split thickness graft and, you see the word, and preparation of a wound for grafting. Our operation was a skin graft and prep. Did we prep? We did harvest from the buttocks. Then we took that graft and we did surgically implant it into a surgically prepared wound. So if you take your notes above that 15002 and put surgically prepared wound written underneath it or over the top of it, That is super helpful so that you can understand and see it for the next time. You did two procedures with this one. We not only harvested a graft, but we also tore apart the skin of an old wound and we put the new graft in there. So we did do both procedures. Yep. Guideline question. Based off CPT guidelines, which statement is true when multiplying biopsy techniques are performed during the same encounter? Did I read that right? Based on CPT guidelines, which statement is true when multiple biopsy techniques are performed during the same encounter? When we do multiple biopsy techniques, when we take multiple different biopsies, maybe one was a needle and one was a punch biopsy, something like that. Is it that primary code for each type of biopsy should be reported? Only one primary lesion biopsy is reported. Only one biopsy is 
reported regardless of the location or facility specific coding conventions determine what is coded. Does that mean your specific guidelines at your job dictate what happens? Which answer is correct according to AAPC? More chicken. Hmm. I'm not sure if I'm seeing a correct answer yet. So far, I'm seeing nothing but incorrect answers. You want to try again? Phone a friend? Magpie, you got my sinuses running, girl. You need a bath. This one we're going to write above our uh, integumentary codes so that we know those are right. We're gonna to go to our 11102 section on the front of our integumentary, and above these, we're gonna write only one primary lesion biopsy is coded. You understand that it's talking about one lesion. If you take a punch biopsy and a needle biopsy from the same lesion, you pick one of those and you code one because it's the same biopsy part, right? If by chance you're biopsying different parts or different things, then you get to build different biopsies. You can still have one punch biopsy and one needle biopsy as long as they're different body parts, right? Yeah, you got to pay attention to the verbiage. Multiple biopsy techniques on the same encounter. I guess they're not telling you it's one body part, but they're being very vague about it. About it. But this answer is correct because it's just one lesion, right? That's singular. It was a very tricky question. Nope. B is your answer. B.
B is your answer. Chicken, good. One of my favorite type of questions to do, I love it when we have a difference between our 14s, our 114s, versus our 116s, right? I'm not worried about the secondary codes. Don't even look at that mess. We're only looking about the first code. Are we dealing with malignant stuff or benign stuff? We have two pages. I don't know if we have any pathology back, but everything keeps saying cyst, irrigated, cyst, 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 cyst. So we definitely would not use this one. So that's helpful. Now, would I use two CPT codes, one diagnosis, two CPT codes, one diagnosis, one CPT code, and one diagnosis? Would I use a modifier or not? If the answer was A, 114, oh, 06, we would be dealing with something that is over 4 centimeters. If the answer was B, we would have something that's over 4. And then we would have something else included, another one that is between 2.1 to 3 in size. Same thing for answer C. We would just add a modifier. So... We have a 4.1 and we have a 2.5. You just need to know whether these would require the modifier or not, right? What do you guys think the answer is? Thank you, An Angel. Thank you so much for saying so. The guideline is on the top page of 86. I got B's and C's.
Take a look over here too. Look at the bottom of this page where we've got this little chart where they're doing multiple things. Does anybody have a 59 modifier? And then we can go over to our area where we're at, 11406, to our 11423. Two different parent codes. Because we have two different body part locations, they're both under the same header as excisions, we probably have some examples here. Four excisions. Every time they say the word four, four, blah, 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 four, blah, blah, blah. Usually if you're going to need a modifier, they're going to say it in any of these guidelines. Like right down here at the end of the other ones for malignant excisions, add modifier 58 if you're doing this or that or the other thing. They always tell us if we're going to need a modifier. I don't see anything in here about needing a modifier. And if we're under the same header, and we're not doing two separate procedures, like we're doing a colonoscopy and an excision, something unusual, a different distinct procedure, modifier may not be required. That was for the last question. Okay. Hey, Mains, how's it going? We're just trying to figure out if we need to use this 59 modifier or not. Answer is B, no modifiers needed. Modifier 59 is not needed because each of the codes is from a different anatomical location classification. If we're just switching procedures from one to another because we have two different body parts, you do not need the modifier 59. That is something you can write at the top of your header on this page that if swipping if swapping or moving from two different anatomical classifications, no modifier 59 needed for multiple excisions. Adding those guidelines to the tops of these pages will slowly get them to sink in. If you have an unusual or complicated modifier or, or procedure, they do give you a parenthetical down here that says to use modifier 22. If you have something that's unusual or complicated, so there's no parenthetical around that says to use 59 either or a guideline. I hope that was helpful. Thanks for the thumbs up. Uh, hang out. I've got how many more questions till we get to our other one that I really wanted to share? Hmm. 
Magpie, honey child. Hmm? I can't be looking at cat butt while I'm trying to teach this class, my child. Lindsay K has become a member. Let me shut my door. Dancing up a storm. Mm. Lindsay K, thanks for joining my YouTube membership. I hope that helps out a whole bunch. All right, this one. Are we in the 16 O's, 15 twos, or 15 O? What did we do? We have two of them that are in the one five twos. Let's go see what's going on there first. One five two oh oh. That is a full thickness, full thickness, full thickness. Did we do a full thickness? We did a derm allograph. Mmm. Our 15 000, that's our surgical prep. Our fifteen two seventy three is a substitute graph. Our two o one Two oh two, that's surgical prep, or seventeen two seventy one. That is that would be for a hundred and fifty. That would be a hundred and fifty square centimeters if it that was the answer. How many, how much did we do? That's just a hundred. So we didn't do a hundred and fifty. That would be even more than a hundred and fifty. No, yeah, that would be two hundred here if it was this one. So we can get rid of that one too. This one equals 100. And this one just has I don't know what. 15 201 that would be 20 20 plus 2, 4, 6, 8, plus the other one, that would be 100 also. Which 100 did we do? Did we do full thickness or just an application of 
a substitute graft with surgical prep. Ooh. Y'all all made your guesses? Yep, C is our answer. Plus, if it's a difference between coding five, six CPT codes and an answer that is just two CPT codes, normally, always, the answer is the smallest of the number of codes, for sure. Just looking at the difference between how many codes would be the answer is super helpful. Plus, we can take any of that information from this exam question. A cellular dermal allograph, we can add that to our 15273. CPT code descriptor, we can add that verbiage to there. We can also add the word donor bank. Super helpful. Add any kind of verbiage you find in these practice questions that is different from the CPT code descriptor. Super helpful. Are we a 13, a 14, or a 17? Don't worry about the secondary codes or the third codes. Let's deal with the first part first. We have two that are the 14s. So I would run to that code first since we have two answers that start off with the same one. Let's look and see what we're under with that one. We're under adjacent tissue transfer. What did we do with this patient? We have three pages. Doesn't look like they're gonna give us the name of the procedure we're gonna to have to look. That makes me think that it's a MA surgery, but we don't have any MAs is the answer. We're going to have to look at the description of the surgery and see what we did without them telling us the name of the surgery. Stage one makes me think that there's a MAS or MO surgery, whatever you call that, but we don't have that as a possible answer, I don't think. The 17? Oh, the 1713. That might be MO surgery, huh? I gotta let a cat out. Okay. Okay, my pie. Last page. Good Lord, what's going on in chat? Miss Suzette. She said on her exam, she had all of those. Great, I am adding that to our documentation of what's been on the exam. Paige, thank you so much. Six additional blocks, you know that needed the 15. 
from talking to uh, Suzette. She also had three, three, six, five, three, six, five. When did you take your exam? She done come in to chat with a wealth of information. Sunday, online exam then. Perfect. Awesome. Such helpful. How did you remember what was on the exam when you can't highlight anything? Amazing memory. That would have been... Eleven five. You said fold the pages down. That's right. I did. You are awesome, Suzette. Good job. Okay, possible answers are up here. Such helpful information that'll let me know what I need to teach. They're not gonna change the exam anytime soon for the multiple fill in the blank options. They haven't even beta tested it yet, so we don't even have to worry about that come January yet. So this is cool, super helpful to have that info. Every exam will be online from January on. All right, 13 would be a complex procedure repair. 1460 would be an ATT. And 17... Is that our Mohs surgery? Moz surgery, whatever you want to call it, Mohs. Moz surgery. What did we do? We did an excision. The tissue was sent for slide preparation. That means the doctor did not create blocks out of it himself, right? If the tissue was just sent in its whole to a pathologist for the review of the margins and the doctor did not create the slides themselves and create blocks and look at the margins themselves, then you know no Moz was done. So we cannot code C. You have to see that blocks were created or microscopic slide preparation. That's the same thing as blocks, which is step two in our Moz surgery. Your doctor has to be not only the surgeon, but your doctor has to also be the pathologist that cuts and prepares the meat that they cut off into microscope slides. If the doctor's not wearing two different doctor hats, being a pathologist and being a surgeon at the same time, then you cannot code a Mohs or Ma surgery. So when that wording is in there, you cannot use Ma's or Mo's. That's helpful. So now we know we're either a complex repair, which it can't be. Oops, can y'all still hear and see me? We cannot be a complex repair 
because we actually went in and did an excision. If all we coded was this, isn't that just a repair? We're repairing somebody falling and into gravel, a motorcycle accident or something, complex repair, 1352. Yep, that's just a complex repair. We created the excision here. So it can't be just a repair. So now we know for a fact that it has to be either B or D. And the difference is two CPT codes, one diagnosis, or one CPT code and one diagnosis. Now, what do you think the answer is? It cannot be A because we're not just repairing something. A repair, even complex, they have to come in with the wound. We created this wound that we worked up today because we did this excision. We did do a repair. But first, we created the wound, so we cannot code A. It has to be B or D. What is our 116? Our 116 uh, is an excision. And what is our number one guideline with 14060? Our number one guideline that you should move over there atop all these codes is that all include excisions, right? They are also 90 day global. So any post op, pre op, whatever. It's all 90 days included, and they include all excisions. So without telling us that this is an adjacent tissue transfer, we coded or picked out the correct answer for an adjacent tissue transfer, and it also says it right here. Also, an AKA term for an adjacent tissue transfer is also called Burroughs Triangle Repair. We've got a running list over here next to the 1400 code. It starts with AKA terms for adjacent tissue transfer. Adjacent tissue transfers can also be called Z plasties, W plasties, P plasties, Y and V plasty, rotation flaps, evasement flaps, B I L O B E D, Ramad, whatever, good gosh, L I M B E R J's. Whatever that is, a transposition, a double peptide flap, 
we can also now add this Burroughs Triangle Repair to our growing list of things that are also called adjacent tissue transfer. These parentheses things are normally not even included in the exam question. They will take that out and leave the question just without saying that in there. So be sure and practice these questions. Copy anything that you can find in the rationale or in the exam question that are AKA terms so that if you ever see it again on any exam question, you'll know what words you can look for in the exam question to know that you're in the right spot. All right, let me turn off my camera so y'all can see what's going on. But D is the correct answer. Yeah. You cannot do it in your kitchen or dining room area. Yep, that is true. Did I copy that down? Yep, I did. Okay, good. Got that. Good job, Suzette. <laughs> and if anyone asked, I was going to say I did that so I can go back and review the question later. You have more coming. Ah, oh, you're an angel. E-R-S-D. I knew that was going to be on there. You knew what that meant, right? I'm glad she let you take it in the kitchen. No boards, no pads, no pencils, nothing. You can have some water and your books and that's it on your desk and some glasses. Yeah, if you need to eat and you need to have something like that on your desk, be sure and email AAPC before your exam. Get an email back from AAPC allowing it, and then you can forward that email during your exam time to your proctor, and they'll attach it to your exam and let you have it, I'm assuming. It's always the best idea to take your exam even remotely online, during AAPC regular business hours, Monday through Friday, you know, 8 to 5, whatever their time zone is. That way, if there is an issue, your exam doesn't have to be stopped. That proctor can call AAPC and ask permission during your exam time or whatever. It'll it, Your exam time won't start until they get permission, you know, but... You'll just be sitting there stressed and waiting for your exam to start, but at least you can you have that option instead of the proctor going, no, I'm not doing it and canceling your exam. Yeah, they do not want an open area. They want you to be in a closed four-wall room. And if you have an open slider door or any windows in that room, they want them covered. No open exam areas. Because they don't know who's walking in front of you. 
while the camera is just pointed at you. No TVs in your room. I had to show I have a TV in my room and it's huge. It's like a 52 inch thing. I wasn't going to move it, um, but I unplugged it. And so I had to show him that the plug was right there and it was off. I mean, it could have been a plug to anything. He wouldn't have known that it was on. I could have been displaying, I guess, the test questions and answers if I knew them, but nobody knows that. I don't know what you would want displayed on a TV screen when you can write whatever you want inside your exam booklets. It makes no sense. Yes, it is a good tip to take it during regular business hours. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much, Suzette, for the info. Those codes are super helpful. All right, next one. All right, are we, I see that we've got three that are 14s and two that are the 1301s. What's going on with that code? 14, 301. We've got adjacent tissue transfer, any area, 1421 is adjacent tissue transfer, scalp, arms, or leg, any area or leg, scalp, arms, or legs. Versus an eleven sixteen. Eleven sixteen is an excision of a malignant lesion. Of the trunk, arms, or legs. What did we do? We did a malignant melanoma excision with a flap. What answer do you think it is? And where were we at? We were inner thigh. Hey, Blondie. They let you have my peppermints. Oh, that's awesome, Blondie. Yay. You know, have them already unwrapped, no packages. Ready to go on your desk. This one is scalp, arms, legs, this one is any area, This one is an excision, legs, what's the 13? That's a repair, 16, 116 is an excision with an ATT of any area
Jones came in late. You take your exam on Saturday. You have to drive down to Mobile, Alabama tomorrow for yours. My proctor emailed everyone and said we can bring snacks and drinks from the cafeteria. Awesome. Be sure to get there 45 minutes early for your exam. I'm not kidding. If you show up on time, like if your exam is supposed to start at 8 o'clock and you show up 15 minutes early, you're late and they may not let you in. You have to be there 30 minutes early. If you want a good seat to pick out wherever you want to sit in the room, in the either in the front of the classroom or the back, you need to get there at least 45 minutes early. So an hour early. Plan to be there an hour early. They have the right to turn you away if you're there only 30 minutes early for your exam. So be careful about those times. I've had them speak to a student out in the parking lot, tell them that they need to move their car. And then they walked in and locked them out of the exam because they showed up late because they had to move their car. Ridiculous. Just be very careful. Infirmary Hospital. So I thought this one was cool because inner thigh I think of as leg, right? And this is, a, is an ATT, this is an adjacent tissue transfer, which is what we did. A rotation flap is an ATT. You know you can't code any excisions with an ATT. So you know right away B and C cannot be correct. It has to be a difference between these two, the 14301 and the 1421. This one has LT on it, which we are doing the left side of a thigh. Is that considered a leg? Or are we on the location of any. It cannot be B because you cannot close, include an excision with an ATT. She wants us there at 7.15. Awesome. I forgot tomorrow's Friday. Today is my Friday because it's Thursday. The kids don't have school tomorrow. So, yeah, you're correct. You know, the interesting thing about this is what are we doing the surgery on? Overall, it's of the skin, right? It's not of the right kidney or left kidney or, you know, something like that. When you're dealing with skin, there is no right or left. when you're dealing with skin. That was something new I didn't even think about because you're so con used to picking right or left of things. You can't use that LT on these codes because they're part of skin. That's a neat guideline thing that probably needs to be added to the integumentary section 
there is no RT or LT. So if you knew that particular guideline, you knew you weren't part of the leg, <laughs> the thigh is not considered part of the leg, Inter interesting enough, it is part of any location. D is correct. A lot of you got that one right. But I thought that sentence was very cool because the skin is one organ altogether. It's your outer layer organ, but it's still its own organ. I thought that was cool. I thought, yeah. I thought it was very reasonable for anybody to pick leg and LT on this question. Yep, I thought A would be a reasonable answer. But inner thigh is considered and any. So next to that 14301, we're going to go add next to the word any area equals inner thigh, right? Don't forget to add anything you can find from these practice exam questions to the code. Any area equals inner thigh. Then we're also going to add at the top up here a header guideline about modifiers LT and RT is not used. With these codes because the skin is one organ system. Super helpful. I am still not done with integumentary questions y'all. This is crazy. If I can I will try to do another live tomorrow night at 6.30. I've got a ton more questions, and I had a request for somebody to do more lab and path. Um, I've got some of those coming up, too. Um, but I'm going to go eat my cold chicken and rice now. <laughs> I've been trying to work on it in between these questions and go hang out with my demon children for a little bit. But I hope this has been super, super helpful. I have all of the CEMC course um, videos up now under the membership members videos. I want to put all the videos for the CPMA up next, and then I'll start working on the COC. That's going to be a lot of videos. But... Um, I want to get the CPMA up first because it's only um, 10 chapters compared to 27 freaking chapters of videos from the COC. So anyway, I'm going to be working on that. I've got more book prep to do. I'm almost done with the Syntigmatary chapter. I don't know what happened to the practice questions. Um, so almost got... Um, Integmentary done, so I can post that up for people that want the 2024 Integmentary notes. Um, but working away at this CPT book for 2024, I worked a little bit last night on cardiology um, with Appendix L. So if you haven't seen that video, it's is it up? Did I download it? I've got maybe I gotta download it from TikTok. And post it up. So I still got to do that, I think. Um, I'll do that right after I get off this live and get that posted because of last night's live on uh, TikTok um, where we did book prep. So that, that would be cool where I'm adding CPT codes 
back there in Appendix L in case you get the one little old question from that section. Um, anyway, I just hope all this material is super helpful, guys. I can't wait to retire at the end of May, the 1st of June, so that I can just do all this full-time for you guys and get stuff out faster. You're very welcome. Yes, yes, yes. Rewatch. Please, please, please. Thank you, guys. I'm going... I'm doing the craziest thing and took the CC last Friday in Mississippi and turning right around and doing CPC. You go, girl. You did pass the CCS. It's so much harder than CPC, girl. Congratulations. That's awesome. I'm going to take that CCS test and see how well I do, too, one of these days. It's the only thing is you got to go to a testing facility, and I'm like, ugh, I don't want to go nowhere. I want to do it from home. But anyway, I'll, I'll think about that. You guys are very welcome. Thank you so much for all the info about Patrice and Suzette about what was on the exam. That is super helpful. It helps me know what to teach you guys. Um, if I go live tomorrow, I'll let you guys know in our Discord group. Yep, knowing the guidelines is super, it, it does make a difference. For CCS, she needed the PCS book, for sure. Yesterday's class, I got to download it from TikTok. I'm doing that right now and post it up. Is CB necessary to do? What does that mean, Suzette? I'm sorry. Everybody's scared, Diana. I know. She didn't need the hit picks book. CPB. What about it? If you want to do billing, you can do it, but it's not necessary. It's not necessary, but you can do it. I bought all their courses, and eventually I will go through that course and audit it. Um, it's not in the mood yet to do it. Probably wait for when I retire to do that one. Whew. But can do it. All right, guys. I'm going to go on to TikTok, download that video, post it up. For you guys to watch the book prep on that and go hang out with my kids hopefully I will be able to see y'all tomorrow it doesn't look like I don't know if we're gonna be doing any scootering this weekend I hope so we just got um, another scooter in from Canada it was a really good deal um, they had an $800 scooter on sale for $300 with free shipping so it's really cool. We got it in, and that way now all four of my kids, Travis included, can all go riding together. We were missing one more device, so that was super cool. We've been playing around with it today. Which one is a good one to do? It depends on what job you want. Do you want to do billing and coding? You might find it easier to get a job faster if you can do both. Billing and coding. But billing wasn't anything I ever wanted to do. After the CPC exam, I'm probably going to give myself a little break in between and relax and review. That's awesome. I love their Ahima workbook that they have on their website um, I think it's great I love their workbook I want to make a workbook like that for AAPC it starts out with the entire book going through the entire thing from anatomy all the way to, to medicine section it shows you how to code it in, in easy format basics then 
it goes through and does the whole thing over again intermediate coding wise and then it does it all over again E and M all the way through the medicine section including ICD 10s and then does it super hard these are the super hard questions I love that I want to make something like that for CPC that you know goes through and does baby basic questions through all the sections and then it'll go through and do intermediate questions and then it'll go through and build on that and then do super hard questions I think that's a great format for learning they just have a lot of fill in the blank ones which we never needed to do before eventually AAPC will have some of those but um, I love that workbook with the HEMA I think it's great yeah, it'll probably be around 6.30 tomorrow. Yeah. All right, guys. I love y'all. I hope it was super helpful. And best of luck to everybody testing this weekend. Get some good rest. No matter what you do, whether you study up to the last minute or not, remember to go to bed and get your perfect amount of sleep no matter what. If it takes you five hours of sleep and you wake up refreshed and feeling good, then great. If you're at the point where 12 hours of sleep is your great spot, make sure that happens the night before your testing day. Whatever you got to do, make sure you get the perfect amount of sweet spot sleep that you can. And take into account that it's going to take you a while to go to sleep because you're excited and nervous. On a normal night, it takes me two hours of laying there before I can go to sleep. So I know on an exam night, it would be four hours. You know, I can't go to sleep right away. People that can lay down, put their head on the pillow, and be asleep in five seconds amaze me. How do you shut your brain off and go to sleep that fast? I have no idea. It takes me hours to, to, to slow it down and do that. <laughs> anyway. Just remember to get your sweet spot, whatever that is. No matter what, try to get your perfect amount of sleep. AAPC website, they have an audit tool. Uh, I could probably show you one real quick too that you could probably screenshot. Let's see. Uh, where's my camera? Ooh. Hold on. I can probably take a picture of this and post it on our Discord too. But um, this is from AAPC. Nan N A N N A also has an audit tool you can download from their site. You're taking your CPC CPMA on December 9th. Be sure and watch the last three lives. Because I talked in depth about what was on the exam the last few lives and what to have in your books. Yep, 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 yep. All right. I hope that helps. I'll see you guys tomorrow night or Saturday night or Sunday night. Just hang out in Discord. I'll let you know when. I hope that's helpful. See you guys later. See you, see you later, Sylvester. <laughs>